Try it again. Good morning. <laughs> I, greet, I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Welcome as we gather uh, for worship on this Lord's Day. I forgot to get the microphone as I was doing all the other things. And we still have feedback. Gee. We keep doing things to eliminate that and it works until Sunday morning. <laughs> yeah. Maybe it's God playing tricks. Best laid plans and all that. So anyway, uh, good morning and uh, as we gather I invite you to uh, uh, if you have a, a joy or concern that you'd like to share with the congregation and have lifted in prayer you can fill out uh, one of uh, these cards you see in front of you in the pew, and I hope that around the children's time we'll collect those. If not, send them up with the offering. Um, uh, we have several announcements, but, um, uh, but uh, my first announcement is, as of yesterday, I am married to the moderator of the, of the Presbytery of Riverside. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, yesterday, Carol became the, Presbyt uh, the uh, Presbytery of Riverside's uh, moderator for uh, this coming year. And so we give her our congratulations and our prayers. And we have some other announcements. Um, so th if those who have announcements will just kind of come and start making your way toward the front. I know Cheryl and uh, Stephanie and then somebody else said, that. oh, and Elizabeth, yes. special ornaments that we put on just this tree in the sanctuary. They are very easy to make. They are always white and gold or silver. Um, and so we would love it if more of you would like to help decorate the Kuspans for us. There is a table in the social hall and see either Carol Ransberger, Diana Filippi, or myself, and we can kind of help explain the process to you. This is not hard. This is not technical. They're all cut out, and it's just your chance to make a Christmas that will stay on our tree for hopefully many, many years, as the last ones did. So anyway, hope that you all grab a Christmas. Thank you. Good morning. So the holiday season is upon us, and next weekend, the deacons will be handing out the Christmas uh, and or, I'm sorry, the Thanksgiving baskets, and then the week in before Christmas, we'll be handing out the Christmas ones. So if anyone would like to contribute, the cost for that is $35. You can make out a check and put uh, holiday baskets on it or, or uh, uh, send some money in an envelope. So uh, uh, hope, hopefully you all have a very Merry Christmas, though. My turn. Um, I'm Elizabeth, and for those of you who are willing and embracing of new technologies, I invite you to join us on Facebook. Hopefully, some of you are watching at home. We're Lake Arrowhead Community Presbyterian Church, but I've recently also set up our church with a Twitter account and an Instagram account. So, our Instagram account is Lake Arrowhead Church. And our Twitter account is L.A. Prez Church. So I invite you to join us, to follow us, 
to check out the announcements. Also check out our website at lakearrowheadchurch.com um, and let me know if you've got any, anything you wanna see, anything new, if you like what you're seeing. Just give us a shout, let us know. Thanks. Okay, and even though it seems a little bit early to be looking at a Christmas tree, it's coming up upon us really fast. And here I am with the clipboard again. We are taking sign-ups uh, this year for the Advents lunch. It's going to be an Advents brunch. And we are going to do breakfast casseroles, fruit, uh, bowls of fruit, and coffee cake or sweet rolls and that sort of thing. So I have a sign-up with some people signed up already, and thank you for those. And we'd like to get this filled in today that way. Even if you need to do something ahead, you can do it ahead uh, and freeze it and heat it up when, it, when the time comes. Um, also want to make an announcement about the women's Bible study. This uh, coming Thursday, we're going to be wrapping packages. And uh, the first Thursday in December, we are going to be doing a cookie exchange where we make cookies for the carolers and shut-ins. And um, if you would, bring four dozen cookies, two dozen will go into the caroling, and then you exchange the other two dozen. So um, that will be, I think, December 3rd or 2nd, or I'm not sure about the date. But anyway, it's the first Thursday in December. So looking forward to seeing all of you, and please sign up when you see me in the social hall. Thanks. Okay, thank you everyone for, for all those announcements. Also, we uh, call your attention to the, the fact that uh, then beyond the Advent uh, uh, luncheon or the Advent bruncheon this year and uh, workshop, we have, um, uh, well, in, in the workshop, uh, the Advent workshop following on that day, we have on the 12th the, uh, uh, the handbell choir concert and uh, that is followed by the Christmas party at the Porch's house. <clears throat> uh, in addition, something fell, hit my toe, and disappeared. <laughs> I don't know what it was. I hope it's not, not something I need later. Anyway. Um, <laughs> where was I? Okay, November the 20th, that's Saturday at 1 o'clock, we are having a new member orientation. So anyone interested in, uh, uh, in uh, joining the life of the church in an official way, this is a two-hour orientation slash class, and, um, uh, and, then, and we'll, we'll talk about membership, you know, the history of this congregation, we'll talk about the Presbyterian Church, uh, Christianity in general, Gee, all in two hours. Um, so that's uh, the 20th. That's this coming Saturday, isn't it? My goodness, at 1 o'clock. Um, so uh, please see me and let me know you'll be, um, be coming. Also, uh, if you want a, a quick little refresher in things and to meet some of the, the folks who are, um, you know, who will, are coming into the church, you, you don't have, I mean, you can already be a member and still come. It adds to the critical mass and, and makes it uh, more fun. I believe those are all the announcements. So, let us prepare our hearts and minds to worship God.
Indeed, I was born guilty, a sinner, when my mother conceived me. You desire the truth in the inward being, therefore teach me wisdom in thy secret heart. Purge me with thy socks, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones that you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all my inequities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and bright spirit within me. Do not cast away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and sustain in me a willing spirit. Then I will teach transgressions your way, your ways, and sinners will return to you. Deliver me from bloodshed, O God, O God of my salvation, and my tongue will sing aloud of your words. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. For you have no delight in sacrifice. If I were to give a burnt offering, you would not do me least. The sacrifice acceptable to God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. O oh God, you will not despise. Do good to Zion in your good pleasure. Reveal the laws of Jerusalem. Then you will delight in right sacrifices, in burnt offerings and whole burnt offerings. Then bulls will be offered on your altar. Friends, the, Lord, the mercy of the Lord is for everlasting to everlasting. I declare to you in the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. Amen. Let us celebrate by standing and singing the glory of Patre. Children, come forward, please. Hi, Hope. Have a seat there. How are you today? Good. So, I, I want to tell you about this. You know what this is called? You have any idea? Yeah, now, you don't have to say it, but raise your hand if you know what this is called. See, some people, but not everybody. So, it's a, okay, I just heard it's a boa. Uh, I, I, I will not practice that it is a boa, uh, much to your relief. Um, but uh, it's called a stole. And this one has a lot of colors in it, right? Do you recognize any of those colors if you look up this way? Where, have you, where else do you see those colors? Up, yeah. Oh, yeah, there on the cross. Yeah, so, so one of the, the members of our church, Lori Ochart, made uh, this stole for me and uh, and made it so that it ma it looks like stained glass, and the colors match the stained glass of the cross, but they're more like the shapes of the stained glass in the sides of, of the uh, 
of the sanctuary. Well, I wear a stole as a symbol, and the stole is a uh, two kinds of symbol. There are two different things that it symbolizes. One is there's a story in the Bible where um, we're told that Jesus washes the disciples' feet. And, um, and, and it's about how Jesus is a servant and then wants us to also serve each other, do things and help each other and, and make a difference. So one thing is that it's like this is the towel that Jesus wraps around his waist before he washes their feet. Because he would use the towel to dry their feet. Oh my. Okay, the other is that it is like a yoke. Now that's like, um, you know, when you break an egg and, and you, you have the white part or the clear part, depending on whether or not it's cooked yet, and then you have the yellow part in the middle, that's called a yolk. But this is a different kind of yolk. This is a yolk that would go around the neck of an animal or two, and uh, you, would use, you would pull on things to help steer and guide the animal. So... Uh, the other thing this is a symbol of is a yoke, and it's like, it's like I'm an animal, and it's around my neck, and God is steering me as I serve. God's steering me and helping me to say what God wants me to say and go where I want, God wants me to go. I'm not sure how well I do with that all the time, but that, that is what we hope and that is what we pray for. So I wanted to, to uh, teach you about the, and everybody else about the stole and what it means. So let's pray. Gracious God, we pray that you will help all of us to serve in the ways that you want us to serve, no matter how young we are or how old we are. We pray that you will guide our steps and our paths, no matter how old we are or how young we are, and that you will always remind us that you love us and that you give us the, the power of love to love each other and to love others. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you, Hope. Boy, I am struggling with this. Okay. <clears throat> well, please join me in the prayer for illumination that you see before you as we turn to the scriptures to, uh, and ask God's help in understanding. O oh God, by your spirit, tell us what we need to hear and show us what we ought to do to obey Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. So we are, uh, uh, in, uh, we are following a series of themes uh, right now that are, are given to us by, uh, by a denominational uh, curriculum. Um, it's more of a teaching curriculum, but I've turned it into a preaching curriculum too. And, and so uh, the theme for this month is confession. And last week we talked about um, uh, the story of the man and the wo woman in the garden in Genesis 3. And their, uh, 
their reluctance to confess, but instead would just prefer to blame someone else. Uh, today, we have a, a story from the, go- from the third chapter of the Gospel according to Luke. And this is the story of John the Baptist coming and proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. John went into all the region around the Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. As it is written in the book of the words of the prophet Isaiah, the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight, Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill shall be made low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough ways made smooth, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. John said to the crowds that came out to be baptized by him, and thus repent and and know forgiveness also. You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruit worthy of repentance. Do not begin to say to yourselves, well, we have Abraham as our ancestor. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham, Even now the axe is lying at the root of the trees. Every tree that therefore does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. And the crowds asked him, Well, what should we do? In reply, he said to them, Whoever has two coats must share with anyone who has none. And whoever has food must do likewise. Even tax collectors came to be baptized, and they asked him, Teacher, what should we do? He said to them, Collect no more than the amount prescribed for you. Soldiers also asked him, And we, what should we do? He said to them, Do not extort money from anyone by threats or false accusation, and be satisfied with your wages. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will endure forever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our rock, and our Redeemer. Amen. Well, back when our kids were young and we were living in West Virginia in a, uh, in a, a, a manse, uh, a manse is what Presbyterians call a parsonage, for those of you who are not aware of that or familiar with that term. Anyway, um, I was in part of the manse and then in another part was, was Christopher, three or four years old, and I, I heard him shouting. So I went to see what was going on, and as I entered the room, I heard and understood what he was shouting. He was saying, I'm a Baptist, I'm a Baptist. I said, son, we don't use that kind of language in this house. As he was saying that, he was holding up an action figure. I am a Baptist. I am a Baptist. I said, whoa, whoa, what are you talking about? What, what's? He said, I am a Baptist. Baptist, fight. I, I, I told one of my Baptist colleagues in town about this. He said, well, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I couldn't really get out of him what was going on, but except, well, he was calling this action figure who was in a fight with another action figure, calling him a Baptist. 
Sometime later, in another conversation, I realized what was going on. Not long before that, um, I had been uh, uh, moving through a, uh, a VHS, remember that, those? Uh, a VHS of uh, the TV miniseries, Jesus of Nazareth. And I was looking for a, a clip to use in a class I was teaching but uh, as I was moving through, we came across, and, and Chris was in the room with me, we came across a, uh, uh, the, the scene where John the Baptist, played by Michael York, is crying out in the wilderness. He's shouting, and boy, he sounds angry, like he's ready to pick a fight. And I realized that that portrayal of John the Baptist caused him to say, Baptist fight. Hmm. Well, then I, you know, I thought about my, you know, John the Baptist, you know, angry, crying out, shouting in the wilderness, repent, you know, preaching a baptism of repentance which isn't usually how we think of baptism, uh, because, well, you know, we're usually thinking of, you know, we, we mix the significance with the, the, the sweetness and sentiment of a baby most of the time. Uh, but he's preaching and angry, calling for uh, repentance, which basically just means change your mind, change the direction of your life and your living and your orientation from that direction that is away from God and toward God. Now, that, that's what repentance is about. And, uh, and I, I remember uh, my own experience with, you know, the word repentance, you know, watch, you know growing up watching TV and seeing you know, hellfire, damnation preachers portrayed on TV, either in real, because there was one on a TV show, or uh, one being portrayed. And repentance sounded like an angry word. Despi in this passage, despite uh, uh, John the Baptist speaking of you brood of vipers, or speaking of the wrath to come, uh, I don't think it's angry and shouting, but a crying out that is exuberant because there's good news to be had. And part of the reason I say that is that that's exactly, that exuberance is exactly what's going on in these words from Isaiah that are quoted, introducing uh, and, and characterizing what John the Baptist is do doing as he prepares the way of the Lord, prepares the way of Jesus. In Isaiah's day, these words were used to announce the good news that the exiles were returning home to the promised land, you know, across the desert, you know, from Babylon, and that they, you know, you know, let the, the, the valleys be raised up, the mountains made low, the crooked paths straight, so they, they could go home. It was, it was good news. And, and yes, you know, our, our sin and uh, many of the choices we make are bad news for us and for other people, but Jesus comes because he is good news that delivers us from the bad. Repentance. Turning around. You know, when we confess, is that enough? And I guess I would say it's enough for forgiveness, but still not enough. 
because God wants more than to forgive us. God wants to change our lives and change this world. God calls us, uh, as, I, as I heard uh, Eugene Peterson, the, the author of the message, or translator of the, the message, say, you know, God's, you know, we spend a lot of time sometimes thinking about being saved, but God's more interested in our living, saved lives. What do we do with our confession after our confession? When we've said we've done wrong, when we've said we've fallen short, and we've been assured that we are forgiven, is there more? Back when I was living in that same manse, I read a novel by Ann Tyler called Saint Maybe. And uh, Saint Maybe is a, a story about a, a young man, he's young at the beginning of the story anyway, uh, a, a young man at um, uh, late high school, then moving into college, who uh, through um, a certain amount of arrogance and sullenness and, um, and, uh, and, and anger, uh, acts in ways that end up bringing about uh, the, the deaths of both his older brother and his sister-in-law. And, and they had children from his sister-in-law's previous relationships. And Ian is filled with guilt and remorse. And it plagues him. By the way, he and his family are, are nominal Presbyterians, you know, making sure they get there on you know, Easter and Christmas. But one day, He's driving along the road, and he sees a, ch a little church and the sign out that says, The Church of the Second Chance. And he goes in, and there he meets Pastor Emmett. And in that time, he confesses, He was ready for that. He hears of forgiveness. And Pastor Emmett says, but that's not enough. He says, you need to raise the children. He's Freshman in college? He quits school. He gets a job as an apprentice carpenter, I think making cabinets, if I remember right, and um, becomes a carpenter, a cabinet maker. He, he uh, raises the children. And then the rest of the book is about that life over the years. Now, being a good Protestant, I had some difficulty with this. Because I thought, that sounds like works righteousness. That, you know, you ought, that, you, you know, that he had to do something. And we're all told as Protestants growing up um, that grace is free, forgiveness is free. You, know, you don't have to do anything. Anybody have that feeling, have that idea? I mean, not that there aren't responsibilities, but 
wasn't sure what to make of it. I, I, I thought it was, you know, profound that he would raise the, the, the children. But then, one day, I was studying and reading uh, this passage of ours today, and I came across John the Baptist's words, bear fruit worthy of repentance. And I realized it's not works righteousness that Pastor Emmett was calling Ian to engage in. It wasn't works righteousness. It was bearing fruit worthy of repentance, consistent with his remorse and his confession. It was living a saved life on the other side of that transgression. Hmm. Every Sunday, we pray a prayer of confession. And we hear an assurance of pardon. You know, some traditions have words of absolution where maybe the, the priest in the role you know, says you are absolved, and basically I absolve you and, and God, along with God. But in our tradition, it's an assurance of pardon, an assurance of forgiveness. But then there's a life that steps out beyond that, that embodies the forgiveness, that seeks to make amends, that seeks to live consistently. You know, the crowd who comes to John the Baptist, and you know, he says, bear fruit worthy of forgiveness, and, and they say, well, what do we do? He says, if you have two coats, and somebody has none, give them a coat. Tax collectors come and are there. Well, what do we do? Don't collect more than you're supposed to, you know, to, to fill your pockets. And, well, like Zacchaeus, Zacchaeus, whom we will hear about later, in, you know, who is a, a rich tax collector. Soldiers come probably soldiers of Herod Antipas more than a Roman soldiers. What, what do we do? Don't use your position or your, your, your power to, to extort money from anybody, but, be, but accept your wages. You know, live in a way that is consistent It is consistent with the grace of God that is in your life, the grace of God that you are acknowledging and accepting and clinging to as you confess and are forgiven and live beyond living a saved life. That, that's something I hope we can take into our confession and our assurance and our living. Something I hope I can. Because that is following the way that Jesus brings. That is walking along that path of the wilderness of life. 
into a land of promise that is grace and love and mercy and hope. Thanks be to God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen.
that your church might grow in this place and throughout the world. So as we move toward our, our joys and concerns, um, uh, first of all, I want to uh, announce that there will be a congregational meeting on the 28th of, uh, uh, of November, and the purpose of that is, to, uh, one, to uh, approve the, uh, uh, the housing allowance for my terms of call, which is something that the, um, uh, the IRS makes us do before the end of the calendar year. So um, uh, we want to check that off. And then uh, we um, uh, also will be electing officers for the, uh, uh, for the coming uh, years, uh, elders and deacons. Uh, in addition to that, we, we have uh, uh, one card that is a, a, a card of thanksgiving from Ben Beckman. He is grateful that he is no longer allergic to Lake Arrowhead. <laughs> so. oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. So congratulations on the improvement of your allergies, and uh, what a terrible thing to be allergic to, <laughs> Lake Arrowhead. Uh, let us uh, turn to God in prayer. Eternal God, we pray that you will uh, ever delight us in the, the joy of your salvation and the joy of living out saved lives. The joy, fueled, uh, the joy of living in a way that is fueled by the power of your, your mercy, your forgiveness. We pray, O oh God, that you will uh, bless our confessions, delight us with forgiveness, and renew our lives and make us a blessing to the, to the lives of those around us. We lift to you, O oh God, the concerns of our hearts and the prayers that have been uh, brought before you. We pray for uh, uh, friends of um, uh, just a minute. Uh, friends of uh, Lenore Espinoza, uh, and um, uh, particularly for uh, the healing of her brother Raul. We pray, O oh God, for uh, Jody Horn, for Christine Flores, for Coa Pesquera, thanking you that he is doing so much better, uh, the, the Lingenfelter's, Lingenfelter's great uh, grandson. Uh, for Elizabeth Marr, and for Bruce Wagner, and uh, so many others who are in our hearts and in, in our minds, we, we pray in a, a special way for, uh, for John Harrison and, and Debbie and their family uh, during this time uh, that he is on hospice. We lift up the, the families of Marlon Clark and uh, Elizabeth Stain, who have uh, both passed away recently from COVID. And we uh, pray that you will uh, grant uh, great encouragement. Uh, we lift up uh, 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 Tori Weiss, who uh, also uh, has COVID, and pray your uh, your uh, uh, blessing with her, and we pray that you will uh, in, encourage her and work your healing there. Eternal God, we delight in your goodness, and we pray that that delight may be shared by the peoples of the earth. Move by your spirit 
around this globe. Usher in peace and wholeness and well-being in places of disaster, of warfare, of famine and strife, of angst, whether it be personal or political. And so much that is personal because of the political. And bless our prayers in the name of Christ Jesus our Lord, who taught us when praying to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us stand and uh, uh, sing our closing hymn, Lord, dismiss us with thy blessing. place, living saved lives, bearing fruit worthy of repentance. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forever, and let all God's children say, Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you. Let us share that peace with one another.